Join me as I explore the exciting world of model railways with behind the scenes features, step-by-step -step tutorials, interviews, videos, reviews, and much, much more. I'm Dawn Quest and I love building model railways. Hi, and welcome to my top favorite layouts of 2023. Yes, I decided to go back through the show archives and pick nine of my favorite layouts, layouts that really stood out for me. And was it difficult? There are so many gems out there. Wait a minute, I hear you say, isn't it meant to be my top 10 favorite layouts of the year? Well, yes, but because I'm such a nice person and because it's a charitable time of year, I thought I'd reward Grumpy Cameraman and allow him to pick one of his own. So, have you chosen one, Grumpy Cameraman? No. Well, I can't wait to see what that one is. So let's get started and we'll start big. This one is a corker. It's an O gauge at over 50 foot long. Now, what I've seen with the larger scales is it's all about the locos at the expense of the scenery. And that's completely understandable. They take up so much space. But this next layout manages to have both with some lovely cameos from the 1970s era, which takes me right back to my childhood. Let's take a look. It's Hazelcomb by Jim McGeechee. Hazelcombe is a terminus station on the western region of British Rail. It portrays the diesel hydraulic era in its twilight years from 1970 to 1977 and really captures the essence of that era even down to some of the outfits. The running sequence begins with all hydraulic classes in operation with some maroon coaching stock and then it moves towards the mid-1970s with universal corporate blue diesels and blue and grey coaching stock. The trains are increasingly hauled by diesel electrics with TOPS numbers. All the locomotives are DCC, sound fitted, and the points and signals are controlled from a mega points control panel. Not only was the layout making its debut on the exhibition circuit, Jim tells me it was the very first time the layout had been put together in one piece. I can only imagine the nerves during the setup the night before. What's even more impressive, I think, is the whole layout arrived in just one van. Now we've all seen lots of English country scenes at model railway shows across the country, but this one really stood out for me simply because of the level of research that this club put into faithfully reproducing this real life location. In fact, spending months, if not years, researching locations is something this club is known for and it's really evident in this layout. Another feature I loved was the day to night lighting, which transformed this layout in a truly magical way. This is Wickwar from the Farnham and District Model Railway Club. Wickwar is a small town on the important secondary main line between Bristol and Gloucester, modelled as it was around the 1950s. The Bristol and Gloucester Railway was built under the guidance of Brunel, famous for engineering works including bridges and viaducts, but also a brewery. Attention to detail is something I really love to see on a layout, and this next one has it in bucket loads. But it's not just detail, it's also story. And the creator of this O gauge layout is a master storyteller on the exhibition circuit. He loves to engage crowds with stories about his layout, how it works, and all the special features. This is The Tar Works by Mike Perry.
Now, who remembers that film, The Italian Job, and that famous scene at the end where the coach is perched precariously on the mountainside? Well, Mike actually worked on that film, and his job was to rock the coach as it was filmed to make it look like it was moments from disaster. This is the self preservation society. The self preservation. Uh, what, what are you doing? I'm doing special effects. Uh, no. From treacherous mountain tops to something calmer, and we cross the border to a Swiss scene. Now, this next layout is absolutely spectacular. It took my breath away. I'm not going to say too much. I'm going to let it speak for itself. It's an engaged layout, Albula Valley, from Nicola Sturge. One of the most stunning railway journeys in the world is the UNESCO World Heritage Site along the Albula Valley to San Moritz. The line was built in 1898 and forms part of the Bernina Railway crossing of the Alps. It runs via Adhesion and includes the famous Land Wasser Viaduct and a sequence of spiralling tunnels. On a clear day you can see trains descend through three different levels. Quite a challenge then to reproduce this at a smaller scale, but one that Nicholas Sturge was up for. Nick's grandparents are Swiss so he recalls many summers going to Switzerland for his summer vacation. Engage allowed Nick to fit the spirals into a small space, but using tight nine degree number one curves throughout, which meant a bit of strategic placing of pylons at times. He also found that the double-decker Swiss intercity train struggled on the steep gradients, so a bit of gentle modification ensued with some magnetic couplings and leveling off of the undersides of the coaches. The whole layout is very impressive with something always moving to catch the eye. Ah, oh, I feel so much more relaxed already. I'm sure you'll agree Albula Valley was a very special layout. Stick around though for my absolute favourite that's coming up in just a moment. Time for something modern now and I do love a fiddle yard. This next one was so impressive just because of the sheer number of wagons one loco was pulling. In fact, it took a whopping 42 seconds for one train to just pass by Grumpy Cameraman's lens. He did have to moan about that, though. Because it was lunchtime and I wanted my lunch. For me, though, it was absolutely mesmerising. It's Gordon's Lane, a double O gauge from Greg Marshall. Now, normally, I might start by showing you the more scenic parts of a layout, but the fiddle yard from Gordon's Lane is so impressive in its own right. At a whopping 24 foot long and 12 tracks wide, it's operated by a team of people who have quite the challenge on their hands. Gordon's Lane is a fictional location somewhere on the Wessex mainline. It's modelled with third rail and a multi-purpose vehicle maintenance depot alongside the running lines. The layout is DCC controlled with full colour light signalling. The sheer size of Gordon's Lane is quite something it can run full length stop. This goods train took 42 seconds to clear this point. Club members were recently featured on Channel 4's Little Trains and Big Names with Pete Waterman, being filmed giving modelling tips to status quo's Francis Rossi. Stay tuned, I might be bumping into Greg just a little bit later. Now, I did promise Grumpy Cameraman a chance to choose his own favourite, so... Are you ready? Yeah. Which one have you gone with? The Ipswich one. Uh, do you mean the Ipswich to Weymouth Hornby 003rd Rail by Richard Marley? Yeah, whatever. Well, it is a great layout. It's fun, it's robust, it's really fantastic to watch. What was it that you liked about it? The dog. It was so worth the wait, wasn't it? I loved this 003rd Rail by Richard Marley. It's fun and takes us back to the early 60s when train sets looked a bit different. This type of track work ceased in 1964 and you may be wondering why there's an oversized dog on the platform. Well, Richard's daughter, who loves model railways, insisted on having a dog on the layout and Dad obliged. And who cares about things like scale? Moving on now to my last four favourite layouts. And this next one is actually not one engaged layout, but a collection earning the title of Small But Perfectly Formed. And the reason I love these layouts is not just because they're a fantastic concept, 
But the one thing I hear from people about layouts is they'd love to build their own, they just don't have the room. Well, take it away, small and working. I really appreciate a well-painted layout. And this next one of my top 10 favorites of 2023, the painting was incredibly impressive. Probably the best weathering I've seen this year, even down to the hyper-realistic water stains on brickwork. This is Rossiter Rise by Terry Chu. Rossiter Rise, a fictitious through station set somewhere in West Northwest London during the mid late 1950s. It has a small LT depot with two tracks leading into the works, plus a head shunt leading to a single road steam shed. Directly behind this is a London Underground Bay terminus platform. And then there are a pair of three tracks constructed as four rail DC in the style of LT and the North London Line. Just two more layouts to go and what these next two have in common is that they both feature snow. But that's where the similarities end. The first layout is a traditional snowy scene, which captures a certain nostalgia of a more magical time and captivates audiences with its beautiful lighting. It's QV by Brian and Yvonne Chapman. QV started life as a summer layout. Now winterized, what's so striking about this layout is the use of blue lighting, which creates a beautiful, magical effect on the snow. And if you think you've seen QV before in another of my videos, you're right. It was featured in my Inside the Model Railway Club video of the Headcorn Model Railway Group. So it's time for my favourite layout of 2023. And this next one is one that I haven't been able to stop thinking about since I saw it at Worley in November. It's another snow scene, but in contrast to QV, this one is really stark with a distinct absence of colour that makes the overall effect even more powerful. Just looking at this layout made me feel cold. What I also love about this is that its creator really has a passion for the landscape and with its striking V-shape has faithfully reproduced the land of that area. This is Moore's View by Paul Holwell. Moore's View, an end gauge by Paul Holwell showing the XLSWR main line between Exeter and Plymouth on the northwestern edge of Dartmoor. The viewer can see prototypical BR1950 steam from both X Southern and GWR railways. In creating this beautiful landscape, Paul told me how he tried really hard to imagine this scenery before it was changed by human hands. Well, there you have it, my top 10 layouts of 2023. Oi, mine. Ipswich was mine my top nine layouts of 2023 and of course with so many more layouts to see i really can't wait to see them all in 2024. maybe you have an exhibition layout of your own that's just about to hit the exhibition circuit i'm really looking forward to seeing it there all that remains for me to say is happy new year happy new year everybody ow that's my eye oh you're all right ah should i call an ambulance no i've just ordered pizza Get pizza. No, your eyes. Pepperoni, that's my favourite. Do I get Ow, off me! Lie down. I am laying out. You move. What did I tell no. you about that? I didn't move at all. Time for the bloopers. Welcome to part two of our day at Tollworth show train. Let's go take a look at some more fantastic layouts. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Oh, 
Is it just me or am I the only one who's midway through one layout project and I'm already thinking about the next? I wanted to show you this, my next project, before I do any work on it whatsoever. 